Hey, y'all. I've been recently getting a lot of questions about applying text to a curve. Those of you who have been following me for a long time, you know that one of my first video series I did back in 2017 was a three-part series on applying text to a curve. This is going to be a refresher and kind of an update because back in those videos, I was using vCarve version 8.0, and today I'm using Aspire version 10.5. This is not going to be a complete remake of that series. This is just going to be kind of a refresher and an update, because as you can well imagine, the software has changed, gone through various revisions, between version 8 and version 10.5. Let's go ahead and get into it, and we'll start by drawing just a standard circle. And I want to make that circle 6 inches in diameter, and I want it centered on my x0, y0. And I'll go ahead and create that circle. Now, to apply text to a curve, I need to know where the start point of this curve is. So I'll select it and tap N to go into node editing, and I see my start point is right here. And the direction this circle has been drawn in is counterclockwise. This is important information to know because any text I apply to this circle is going to start with the first character at this start point, or based off of this start point, and the text is going to run counterclockwise. We, generally speaking, read from left to right, in English anyway, so we'll right-click on the vector and come down here to Reverse Direction. I click on that, and we see the arrow has shifted the other direction. Now, if I apply my text, it's going to go in the correct direction, meaning the first character will be based on this starting point and run clockwise. Now, if I want to base my text on this start point, I'm fine. If I want to base it over here, I'll just right click and come down here to make start point. If I want to start it over here, or start it down here, I can, of course, make one of these my start point. The important thing is to know where your start point is, and know which direction that vector is being drawn in, because that's going to determine which direction your text will flow. If I want my text to start based on this start point and flow all the way around this circle, I'm finished. I don't have to do anything else. But if I want text above this circle and below this circle, I'm going to have to split this circle into two separate arcs. Now, the easy way to do that is to hover my cursor over this start point, right click, and I want to select Cut Vector. Now, if I look over here, I see my keyboard shortcut is C. So I can just put my cursor over one of the points, tap the letter C, and it's the same as using this menu. So since I'm in the menu, I'll go ahead and cut the vector there. Then I'll come over here and tap the letter C, cut the vector there. Now we see the points went away down here because this is now a separate vector from that one. My start point again is over here, and the direction is clockwise. Now I want to check my lower vector, so I'll click off, select that lower vector, and we see the start point is over here, and this runs counterclockwise. Now, this is where there is some confusion. If I want to run the text all the way around the circle, in one continuous stream, and allow these characters down here to be upside down, I want one 
closed vector. If I want my text to be right side up up here and text to start over here and be right side up down below, I need to split this into two separate vectors and make sure the start points are over here on the left side and they both flow from left to right. So clockwise on the top, counterclockwise on the bottom. And that's what I have here now. So I can click off, click in to come out of node editing. Now I'll want to create some text and apply it to the curve. And there are a couple of ways of doing this, and I'm not going to go into the basics like I did in that first series. If you missed that first series, I've put a link to a playlist of that text on a curve series down in the description of this video. And I'll put a link to the playlist in a card up here right about now. So we're going to need to get some text out here to apply it to either one of our curves. So we'll go up here into our draw text tool. Now here is where the majority of the changes have been made in the software. I'm going to come up here and type in the text I want to enter. And I'll use the same phrase that I used in those earlier videos. I'm going to say, this is sample text. And you can see it's written my text down here. And before there was an apply button over here, well, that apply button is no longer there. Because now the create text tool does these updates in real time as you change them. Now, I've selected my font. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. I'm going to make it bold, however, because I do want the font to stand out a little bit more. And I want to align the text in the center. My height, I'm going to leave it one inch tall. I have my text. Everything is fine. I'll go ahead and close it now. Now, with my text selected, I'll hold down Shift and select this vector, this top vector. Come over here to wrap text along a curve. And I'll click that icon. Now, it immediately moved my text up on top of this curve because that's the last setting I had in the text on a curve tool. Now, not much has changed over here. Other than it also no longer has the apply button. Any change you make over here is going to be made in real time out here. It will automatically apply those changes so you can see those changes as you're creating them. So the first thing we're going to go through here is the text size. I want to maintain that one inch text height that I entered. I also have the option of scaling the text to fill the curve on a sliding scale from 10% to 100%. What this would do is I'll select that. My slider is at 100%. This increases the size of the text to fill as much of this curve as it can. Now, that can come in handy for some designs, but for my design, I don't want to do that. I want to maintain the text size that I set in my text tool, my draw text tool. Moving down here, I have text spacing. Now, it is set right now at its default, which is the default for the font. But there is a process known as kerning which can be used to move letters closer together should you decide that you need to do that. Now, we can adjust some text spacing here, but what it does is it bases it off of this blue circle here, and it adjusts the spacing on every letter simultaneously. So when you have a letter like this H and I, or the I and S, where the spacing is already just fine, 
if I want to tighten up these two letters here, if I use this tool, it's also going to tighten up the space here that I don't want to change. So I'm going to leave the text spacing alone here and we'll do our kerning later on in another process. Now we have the text position set to above the curve. I could also put it on the curve and that will place the center of the tallest characters on that curve. Or I can go below the curve. I'm going to keep it above the curve. Now here we have a checkbox for text on the other side. I'll go ahead and I'll check that. You can see what it does. It flips the text 180 degrees and applies it to the inside of this curve. Uh, that's not the look that I'm going for. So I'll switch it off. Then we have an offset distance. My offset distance is currently set at zero. That offset distance is the position of this text in relation to this curve. Right now I have an offset distance of zero, so the bases of these characters are sitting on top of this curve. If I want to space it out away from this curve, I can enter an offset distance here. For instance, I'll choose one eighth of an inch and let it update. And as you see, it does all these updates in real time. I no longer have to apply that change. But it has moved these characters an eighth of an inch away from the curve itself. Now, if that's the look I'm going for, I'll go ahead and keep it there. Now, the text alignment is based on that start point that we set in node editing. Our start point is over here. The software knows the end point is over here. By selecting the middle, it finds the middle of this curve, this vector that we're basing this on, and that's where it places the center of the text. Not any one particular word, the whole line of text. I can set it to the left if I want to start it at that start point. I can set it to the right if I want to start it at the end of that curve. And you'll notice this blue square changes when I do that. If I go back over to the left, it's going to shift over to the first character and go to the start point of that curve. If I go back to the middle, that blue point is going to jump to the center of that vector, and that's where the center of the text is going to be based. This section here is the individual characters themselves, whether we want them aligned to the curve so that they tilt to follow the curve, or we can check down here to keep these characters vertical. Now this is not the look that I'm going for. There are occasions where you will use this type of a look, like on a clock face, for example. But I want to align it to the curve so that the text flows with that curve. Once I have that placed, I can go ahead and close, click off, and my text is now following this curve one-eighth of an inch away. Now I can do my kerning because I do have some spacing issues here. So I'll select my text and come up over here to Edit Text Spacing and Curve. Click on that icon and I'm going to come over here between the T and the H. And this is based on the little plus sign. You'll notice the V and the A have the arrows facing towards each other. I'll put that plus sign right in between the T and the H, and I'll just click my left mouse button and keep clicking it until I think it's spaced to suit my taste. That's a little bit better, I think. But you'll notice that all of the characters moved when I tightened up that space and I can tighten up the space in between the words here as well. Again, put that plus sign in between 
the two words and click my left mouse button. And that kind of tightens those up a little bit. Then I can go back to my standard selection mode, click off, and my top text is just fine. Now I want to finish up by coming back up here into the text tool. And I'll not change any settings down here, except I want to make it bold. And I'll type, close that, and with the text selected, shift, select my bottom vector, then come back up to text on a curve. Now, because my last settings were above the curve in the middle and align the characters to the curve, it placed the text here. Well, I want to switch over to below the curve. And here we can see an example of needing to adjust the spacing of the entire sentence, the entire phrase, because all of these characters are spaced just a little bit too far apart. But before I play with that spacing, I want to make sure it's placed accurately. Again, I want an offset distance of an eighth of an inch. Let that update, and it's moved everything an eighth of an inch away from my curve. Now I can adjust my spacing. The order in which you do these changes and make these selections are sometimes dependent on one another. Now, the text spacing is way up here, but if I make any changes down here, it's going to affect that spacing. So you may have to go back and forth a little bit, and that's fine. That's normal. So now let me tighten up my spacing a little bit, reduce the spacing some, and I'll keep going little by little until it starts to look more like single words rather than individual characters spread out along the curve. Now, I still need to do a little bit more spacing here, but if I go any more using this tool, my X and my T are going to overlap, and I don't want to do that. I have my text position set. I have my offset distance set. My text alignment is set where I want it. And again, I want to align it to a curve. So I can close this and click off. Now I can select the text and come back and do any spacing that I think I need to do. Go back into standard selection mode, click off, and there we have it. Now, there are other ways of applying text to a curve. If we delete these two curves, for example, and I want to make changes to this text, there are some changes I can make, and this formatting will stay used to be you had to undo the curve if you wanted to change fonts, for example. With the new draw text functions, that is no longer the case. It's going to remember where I placed this, the curve. It's going to remember all of my formatting, my eighth of an inch offset from the vectors I have deleted. I can come along and change fonts, and it's going to keep that formatting. Now, when I change fonts, I may have to come back in and change my spacing. But other than that, it's going to keep that format. I no longer have to undo the curve, change fonts, then go back through recurving the text. Now, should I want to remove the text from a curve? I can, with that text selected, right-click and come right down here, Remove Text from Curve. Just click that, and it becomes standard, normal text. Then I can make changes, modify, as I wish. I'm going to Control-Z to undo that, because I want this text to stay on a curve. I'm also going to Control-Z 
to undo the font change because I want this basic font. There is another way to put text on a curve and adjust and position this text. And that is use Edit Text Spacing and Curve. Now if I click on this icon and come over here, all it's going to let me do is adjust the spacing. If I click on the font, nothing happens. I can't adjust the curve without going back into text on a curve. So what I'll need to do, I'll go back into standard selection mode, is I will go ahead and remove the text from a curve. And now, if I come up here to Edit Text Spacing and Curve, we notice we have this line on the top and a line on the bottom. I can still edit the spacing, and in fact, I'm going to move these two apart slightly. I'll hold down Shift, click, click, click to get a little bit of space between the T and the H. But now I can click on one of these green squares and create the curve that I want. I can also rotate the text by clicking on one of these red squares and moving it this way or that. Now the disadvantage of creating text on a curve this way is that it's slightly harder to get the text to follow a specific curve. You can do it, but it's a little bit more involved. Let me go back into standard selection mode, click off, and I'll undo all of those changes. And that is, again, I will create my six inch radius circle out here at my x, y, zero, and that's going to give me a guide. Now I'll select the text. Right click, remove text from curve, then come over to edit text spacing and curve, come over to this green square, and I'm going to pull this, drag this down approximately an eighth of an inch away. That's about right. Keep pulling until I have my white square in the center. Now that's just a little bit too high up. So I'll drag it down and pull up until my white square is at my x, y, zero. And there is my approximate one eighth of an inch distance. Now, yes, I could offset this circle an eighth of an inch. So I have a definite line to follow, a definite vector to follow. But you see the difference in creating, applying text to a curve after you've created the text using wrap the text along a curve and edit the spacing and curve. The advantage here is, once again, you can shift the position anywhere. You are not bound by left, middle, or right. This can go anywhere, do right in the center of that quadrant, for example, and click off and place that text there. The same with this here. If I select this text, right click, remove text from curve, then go into Edit Text Spacing and Curve. I can now pull it down. Then I can rotate this over here, for example. So there is some flexibility depending upon which way you decide to apply that text to a curve. Now, let me go ahead and start over to refresh that just because it's called apply text to a curve 
doesn't mean that it has to literally be an arc shape. We can draw a polyline from here down to here, space bar to finish my line. Then I can draw some text. Let's go back to my Arial font. I want it to be bold, one inch tall, and I'll type close that. Now with my text selected, hold down shift, select that vector, and it's too long to fit on the curve. Uh-oh. Okay. It had to adjust the size, but it made the change regardless. It adjusted my text size. We can see that here. My text spacing is okay. I have it set above the curve. I could put it on the curve. I'll keep it to the middle and I want to keep that alignment. We have a line to the curve here. I could keep it vertical. I'm not really interested in that look, so I'll keep it aligned to the curve. So my point in this is just because the process is called align text to a curve doesn't mean you have to use an arc shape. You can use any vector, open or closed. You can run into trouble with closed vectors, but it's rare. Let me go ahead and get rid of this, and we'll try something else. You can take a circle, and I'm going to make it smaller this time. And we'll create that. Close. And once again, I'll select it, go into node editing. And once again, I'll cut the vector here. And I'll cut the vector here. Make sure I have my start point on the left with the arrow going counterclockwise down below. And start point on the left with the arrow going clockwise up above. So now I'm going to come out of node editing, select the vector, select it again to go into move and transform mode. I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to grab it by the end point here, slide that over to my XY zero, click off, select this one, click it again to go into move and transform mode, and I'll bring it over here and snap it to that vector right there. Close that. Now I'll join these two. So I want one open vector. Close that. And now I can adjust my text to follow this curve should I want to. Well, that's a little bit abrupt. So what I think I'm going to do is go into move and transform mode. Take this box right here and hold down shift so I'm expanding this from the center. And let's make it a little bit more graceful. It's still pretty drastic here in the center, but I think that looks a little better. And now I can come up, draw some text, and type in close, hold down shift, select the vector, apply text to a curve. Here it's Put itself on top of the vector, which is fine, but I want it to start over here on the left. It has maintained the text size because it can. And I've aligned the text to the curve. I'm not going to use an offset. I'm going to leave everything just as it is. Close. Click off. Back into draw text. It looks like a mess. That's okay. Close. I know I didn't do bold on these. Hold down shift. Select my curve. Come over here. And I want to go below the curve. And I want to go to the right. Now I've got a mess right here that I'll have to clean up with some text spacing. I've got a mess all over the place, but it can be done. 
close. Come back into adjust text spacing. And let's tighten these up. And you see how it's separating the S and the A as I move these closer together. It's because its position on the curve is changing. And now I actually want to tighten this up just a little bit. I'll go back into standard selection mode, click off, and I can delete that curve. So my point in all of this is the options have really increased by the introduction of real-time changes, whether you're talking about the draw text tool, they're no longer being an apply button, you can see the changes as they're being made, or if you're talking about the text on a curve tool. The adjustments can be made in real time, so you can see it before you commit to it. So, I hope you got something out of this video. And if you did, I do hope you'll give me a thumbs up. As usual, later on this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, I'll be hosting a live Q&A session where we can discuss anything I've demonstrated in this video. Again, that's this afternoon at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern, right here on my YouTube channel. And I've put a link to that live Q&A session down in the description box of this video. Now, these live Q&A sessions are a great reason to go ahead and subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And when you click that red subscribe button, click that little bell icon right next to it. Then click it a second time and set that menu to all notifications. Then you'll get a notification the next time I post a video and the next time I go live. So I do hope to see you this afternoon. And as always, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, I'd like to thank you very much for taking the time to watch, and y'all take care.